Hello and welcome to another episode of the Space Update. Coming up on today's show, Astra unintentionally completes its first horizontal launch, Dawn Aerospace's space plane takes to the skies, and more space news. Let's do this. Alright, so launch update. It's a bit of a quiet one this week. Looking ahead on Friday the 3rd of September at 2pm UK time or around 9pm Eastern time for those in the US, we will hopefully witness the very first launch of Firefly's Alpha rocket uh, from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. So just that one this week. But uh, staying on the topic of launches, we saw Astra's third attempt to launch its new and improved Rocket 3.3 on the 28th of August. Astra's previous attempt just fell short of reaching its target orbit due to a lack of fuel. On the NASA Spaceflight livestream, the modifications and improvements were made along with making the rocket 5 foot longer to accommodate the slightly larger fuel tanks. But on the day, one of the engines failed just as the Astra Rocket 3.3 left the pad, causing it to tilt and very nearly fall. I was literally on the edge of my seat watching that. Never seen anything like it. It was absolutely bonkers. But with the thrust vector control system, the rocket immediately recovered and essentially did a partial horizontal launch or power slide, if you like. Pretty hilarious, but uh, they made it work before sluggishly ascending to a safe height to bring the rocket back down and initiate flight termination system. Or it may have just fell into the ocean, that one. But without all the engines firing it, it was never going to make it to orbit. Hopefully nothing major with the actual rocket itself, and we'll see Astra back on the pad very soon. But in another first, Dawn Aerospace completed its initial test flights of Mark II Aurora space plane, paving the way for further research and development and upscaling the vehicle in the near future. As you may have seen, this vehicle isn't quite full size and only sports a set of gas turbine engines on the back there for now. But Stefan Powell confirmed to us uh, these will be moved once the main rocket engines are fitted and recent tests are to test the airframe and avionics in the vehicle. If you want to check out our interview with Dawn Aerospace, I'll leave a link to that down below in the description uh, or at the end of this video if you want to click it there. But uh, absolutely incredible vehicle, and I can't wait to see more from Dawn Aerospace very, very soon. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. If you'd like to spot our journey through time and space, head over to patreon.com forward slash total space. And as always, show some love by liking this video and hitting that subscribe button. Now, on with the show. Quick roundup of other space news this week. Uh, we saw SpaceX return after a very quiet period with a cargo mission to the International Space Station with their Dragon module. That's up at the International Space Station now, I believe, that one. Um, it's also been announced that NASA is testing a brand new type of heat shield and featuring spider weave. This mysterious material that may one day allow vehicles to safely enter the atmospheres of other planets without burning up, as well as free up more room inside the spacecraft, unlike previously tested materials that were made by stitching together individual panels similar to Starship and the uh, shuttle. Uh, they were essentially stitching together or sticking together individual panels. Spiderweave is continuously woven into the heat shield's fabric, making it one solid piece, making it safe, efficient for space travel to other planets by rovers, shuttles and other vehicles, all the more likely. Uh, more on this as it comes, but a fantastic announcement from NASA and we'll look forward to more on this very soon. Now Starlink, uh, where have the launch been lately? Well, Glenn Shotwell announced that uh, the lack of launches are due to the satellites being fitted out with laser terminals to communicate with one another to reduce the reliance on ground stations. Uh, this is one of many upgrades to reduce reliance on other technology and reduce the overall costs from the end user without compromising on quality by bringing costs down from $500, which people are currently paying now and some of the Total Space team have paid that, uh, so by the end of the year or up, up in 2022, you're looking at $250 uh, deposit there. And then going ahead 2023 and onwards, they're hoping to bring it down even more. As Glenn Shotwell said half again from 250 So you're looking at 100 to $150 potentially in a few years' time, which is uh, quite promising considering how much you pay for internet these days and everything around the world. But there you go. Uh, that's all for this week. Uh, here's a link to the Dawn Aerospace video, and here's a link to uh, me with Launcher One. Catch you next week.